typical all-star game in hockey probably a lot of scoring not a lot of defense and the poor goaltenders are just got to do what they can we're gonna see some pretty good goaltenders tonight I guess an appropriate subtitle for tonight's first game is perhaps these are some of the college stars of the future and when we talk about stars of the future we mention the suburban high school hockey league we see one high school that's virtually claimed the hockey dynasty and that's none other than Germantown Academy Greg and as always they're loaded with lots of talent yeah they're having another strong year they're undefeated 12-0-2 so far in the league uh, in first place in their division but just ahead of a council rock team that is only has only two losses themselves we're gonna see a couple of stars from both of those teams most notably from Germantown Academy watch Kyle Neary number 47 14 games so far this year Florian he has 30 goals 20 assists 50 points seven of those goals on the power play and then we're talking about Council Rock and their big defenseman Tim Rink who's gonna be a defensive presence on the ice tonight for Suburban and he has nine goals 23 points in 17 games this year also providing some super talent in the nets from Germantown Academy. Tonight will be Sam Wiener. He definitely will factor in being at tonight's game. But, you know, as you look at the all-star rosters, uh, Greg, you pretty much expect to see senior men, uh, juniors and seniors. But what impresses me, I take a look at that suburban high school hockey league roster, and I look at some of the youngsters. And one we're very familiar from some of our coverage from last year, Dan Andrzejewski, a first a first year player actually a freshman from Archbishop Wood making the all-star team he's not alone he's got a teammate Chris Yorty he's a sophomore and then Sheltonham has Nate Smith he's a freshman and also a backup goaltender Joe Santucci so I'd like to give a special recognition to some of those younger guys who normally don't make an all-star roster and it's a real credit to them for making this all-star team and uh, we'll look to see them get involved in some of the action tonight as well well Nate Smith a big scorer for Sheltonham I mean only a freshman as you mentioned 16 games this year has put the puck in the net 15 times so far this season we'll talk about the uh, coaching staff for the suburban high school hockey team and that is John Iowa and Andy Richards are the head coaches and Ross Morgan will be assisting him now we'll flip over to the lower Bucks high school hockey league and once again some of the teams that dominate that area Conwell Egan Ryan the Chamonix they have uh, a fair representation from their organizations as well yeah and watch you want to watch Brian Urban senior goaltender from Conwell Egan had a great playoff flat run last year good strong goaltender he's gonna face a lot of shots as we mentioned Kyle Neary coming down at him from Germantown Academy but Urban very strong in net so far this year deserves to be here no underclassmen make up the rosters of the lower Bucks high school hockey league so Greg pretty much an experienced team a couple of these fellows had some action in the all-star game last year I understand and they've got a very good supporting coaching staff led by Brian Tibbles Kevin Fry and the assistants Bill Connors and John Brea and we'd like to wish both teams lots of fun and lots of success and I know tonight it'll be a very enjoyable game especially this first all-star game between these two teams yeah, it should be a good one and then as I mentioned we mentioned stay tuned because you got division one hockey following this one but this one should be high scoring the college game probably not as high scoring okay high school all-star hockey coming up featuring the suburban high school hockey league all-stars and the lower bucks high school hockey league stars right after these words on your home for high school hockey suburban cable tv Welcome to Face Off Circle Hockey Arena in Warminster, Pennsylvania for about to start tonight's annual high school hockey league matchup featuring the All-Stars of Suburban High School Hockey League and the Lower Bucks High School Hockey League stars. Hi everybody, I'm Florian Kemp along with Greg Betts and Greg as we mentioned in the pregame show it's good to be back hockey season in full thrust here with Suburban Cable 
and indeed an exciting preliminary matchup between two highly talented all-star teams of youngsters from this area that hopefully will be seen in the future in the college ranks. Yeah, and there's a lot of college coaches here scouting this game, Florian, because it's getting to that period of time where, you know, scholarship offers could start to be given out to those seniors and even juniors who can make a good impression on these college coaches. This is another stepping stone in their career if they want to play college hockey. Okay, action about to get underway at center ice, and we'll go through the complete rosters as we make our way through tonight's telecast. But the officials tonight, Scott Adams and John Craig, and it's, of course, the Suburban High School All-Stars in white moving from right to left in the light jerseys, and, of course, lower box in blue as the puck is dumped into the zone, clearing play back there behind the net. Play just underway here. Three 15 minutes played here in high school regulation. Shot from the point, save right on. Urban comes up with the first save of the game, and a nice shot there from the right point. No, no screen in front that time. He had a good look at it, but a nice kick save off the point shot. Suburban controls in the neutral zone. Pass broken up at center ice. Good check delivered there by Fox. He dumps it into the Suburban zone. Pox cleared behind the net, brings it out to the near side. And now Suburban tries to work it up to the neutral zone. Two on two at center ice. Play comes back over to the left wing, charging in on that play. Skinner has it, knocks it behind the net. And now Lower Bucks tries to clear it on the far side. Puck still kept in the zone. Coming back out, pass charge back into his own set on the base. Knocked out on the near zone. Nice job by Sam Wiener, comes out of the net, saw his defenseman was beat a little bit, came out, played the puck up the boards, and stopped the possible shot opportunity from Lower Bucks. Young dumps it into the corner, control, there's a shot from the point, right on under, a nice glove save there by Brian Urban. Again, Urban, no screen in front, was able to see that shot perfectly, throws the glove and makes a save. Looks right now like Suburban 1 has a little bit of an edge in the play domination early on, but you gotta wonder how much these two teams have practiced together. It's gonna take a, maybe a period to get together and realize who's on the line with you and what they like to do. That's right, it takes some time before both teams, but it's Dave Woodbury in the Nets for Suburban down at the other end. Here's a backhander, shot blocked in front, rebound behind the net. Got a stoppage in play, 13.41 left to go in the first period. Play just underway, no score. Both coaches, obviously, coaches from both teams want to get everybody into this game. Uh, well, obviously, it's pretty much for bragging rights, but nonetheless, uh, in recognition of the talent of the youngsters that made these teams, it's good to see everybody get enough ice time. Right, you'll probably see the goalies, if they're, um, I think there's two on the lower Bucks team, they'll split the first and second period, and then whoever's the hotter goalie will play the third, and probably the same thing with Suburban. Lower Bucks can't, having difficulty, now they make it up, trying to play, oh, there comes a break, all along, right on in, takes it shot, oh, and it looks like, I don't know if they're gonna count that, and they might, and that was Tom Kaffenberg. But a great save by North Penn's Dave Woodbury. Played it well, came out to cut down the yellow, and then backed in, let the go didn't make the first move on it. If you're a goaltender on a breakaway, you don't want to make the first move, because then the shooter can pick his spot for the net. You make him make the move, decide where he's going to shoot, and you make the save. He did a great job. Butterfly out with the pad, made the stop, knocked the post off the mooring, so the face-off's in their own end. Randy Rangione on the face-off as it's stripped away. Here comes Suburban working down the left wing, and on the play is Grossman. He goes right on the near side, pad save behind the net. Grossman has it. He's checked off the play, dumps it back, slap shot from the point, high and into the net, and it'll be a face-off with 13.03 left in the first. And they see the goalies coming up big so far here in the first period. Breakaways within seconds of each other for both sides, and both times the goalies come up big. That last time down, great speed by Beecham to create that breakaway on his own, really. Just tried to set up the pass, really. Didn't have anything to go, so finally a late shot and a good save by Urban to cut off the short side. Face off just outside the lower Bucks zone on the far side, dumped into the zone, and Bucks will recover. Back there's Pat Duffy. He dumps it on the left wing boards. Play is picked up at center ice. Here comes a potential break. It's Danny Lenza. He has it broken up. And now it's Suburban trying to work it out to the neutral zone. Good pressure. Puck's kept back in play. Hard checking. A puck is picked up there by Suburban in the back of their own zone. That was Doug Dietz. He circles it back out to center ice. Puck dumped along the near side boards once again. And Suburban works it on the left wing boards. And Kyle well, Egan's Bill Mooney is out there wreaking havoc right now, hitting with the body, taking the body, and he's created a couple of turnovers in the defensive end. He's trying to make some things happen, perhaps like make some more friends. Well, that, may, may, that may be his game. He may be that defensive enforcer on the ice. Puck is cleared into the zone. Way out is Woodbury. He slows it down. 
Suburban Al trying to clear the puck out of their zone, temporarily pinned in. Good forechecking there by a moment by Lower Bucks. Puck is also on the far side, pressure from the point. Shot comes right through the slot area, nobody there. Puck is clear along the near side boards. Kept back in play, hustling back into it was Bill Mooney. Yeah, Puck good, now. Good pressure by Lower Bucks there. They just can't really get a good shot off though. Both teams now were pretty tentative in the beginning, feeling each other out, and then both teams taking advantage of some quick breaks, and both goaltenders pretty much flawless in the opening minutes of the first period. Yeah. Nice job by the goaltenders, and really, again, that gelling process of line mates hasn't taken place yet here in the first five minutes. Puck is cleared out in the neutral zone. Now both teams swapping possessions in the neutral zone, trying to get organized, and here's Suburban, right wing pass to the far side. Nobody on the play, and back there, Hustling nicely is Kenny Goat. He can't clear it out of the zone. It's kept in play. Lower box has it. They try to get it out to the neutral zone, and they do. It's picked up. Suburban Cable dumps it down the right wing. Suburban Cable, I'm calling us our team. It's Suburban County All-Stars. Puck is behind the net. As the play is worked out, good forechecking this time by the Suburban High School All-Stars as Lower Bucks tries to work it out on the left wing boards. Here comes a one-on-one -on -one situation. Weak shot right on in, Woodbury with good form on the near post comes up with a save. Yeah, and nice job that time of using the defenseman rink as a screen on that shot. Almost got through, but a nice, nice. job that time by Mike Gaddish. Nice one touch pass into the zone. Frees up both teams for a line change. 10 and a half minutes left to go in the first period. No score. Here comes Lower Bucks on the fly. Puck is dumped back at the point, kept in play by Britt. Fred along the right wing, dumps it in behind the net. Good checking defensively by Superban. They try to clear it out. Here's an opportunity, a weak backhander. Oh, and just misses on the near side of the net. Yeah, best scoring opportunity of the game right there for Lower Bucks besides the breakaway. They just couldn't get the shot. Had the puck in the slot, couldn't get the shot off though. Play is kept back into play on the Lower box zone, they try to work it out on the right wing boards. The puck flips up into the zone. Suburban now trying to clear it back out on the play. Here they come. They've got a three on two. It's center ice. Passed right through the legs. And there's offsides on the play. And a little bit ahead of his teammate was Matt Skinner. And Skinner really upset with himself, but not his fault because he's breaking down the wing on a three on two. The pass from the centerman, if it doesn't get knocked down by the defender, the defender got in the way, got his skate on it slowed the puck down just enough that Skinner was unable to hold up his momentum on the blue line, gets into the zone before the puck, and thus is called for the offsides. We mentioned, Greg, that both of these teams really not having a lot of time to prepare, but it's interesting to see. We've played a little over five minutes here in the first period, how well they're starting to gel and find one another out there. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting. We thought it would be a high-scoring affair, but right now it's defense and goaltending. Nice backhander turned away. Rebound is picked up by Suburban. They get it in the slot and a quick shot. Nice stop there by a Bucks defender on that play as he clears it out to center ice. Three on three, puck dumped into the near side zone. Hustling on is Kaffenberg. Kaffenberg's been one of the main thrusts offensively for lower Bucks. Here's a break for Suburban. He takes a shot right on the defender. Good skate block there by the defender. Yeah, nice job. That's Kyle Neary coming down there. Neary two on two, showed great speed through the neutral zone. You see why he has 30 goals this year. Bucks control by Suburban All-Stars right at center ice. Temporarily broken up by Ron Joan. And now it's carried into the zone, trying to go around one defender. Lower Bucks defense coming up with some big saves, big blocks in the front of their own net. Yeah, nice defensive play that last time on a poke check as again near he came down and entered the zone, but couldn't even get a shot off. Here comes a shot, and we have an offsides on the play, and that's to be pretty much expected. Players from both teams really unfamiliar with the pace and speed and sometimes offsides. It's just a matter of timing. Right, and that time it was number 19, Tom Koffenberg, who was in a, just a step early and I think yeah. really had a chance to hold up, but didn't, like you mentioned, not playing together, didn't know the speed of the centerman coming down with the puck and just walked in a step too early. Tommy Koffenberg's a senior from Judge. Obviously a lot of good stick handling ability and some good speed as he rushes right up the middle. Buck is dumped into the suburban zone. They control behind their own net. Now they bring it along to the near side. It's going to be kept in play there by lower Bucks. Now the puck comes out to center ice on the left wing boards. Both teams swapping possession frequently here as they try to find their own rhythm in the first period. We've got about less than eight and a half left to go in the first period. Play is brought at center ice. Overskated puck now centered, batted in down towards the right wing. Now that play was Billy Farris. And a puck comes back over the far side. Here's a two on three on two. Suburban on the attack. Working his way down is Danoff. 
Danoff now has a puck knocked in. It's kept back in play at the point there by Brian Ball. Puck is steered around to the far side boards. And Lower Bucks tries to work it out. They get it over the blue line. Not quite, almost. Now a follow-up brings it across. Spurman with a line change. Comes a play down the left wing as he works his way in. Shot right in the save. Pad save by Woodbury. That was a nice play on that far side. A rebound in front. Nobody there. Here comes a play on there. That is Nidek. Nidek has it tipped off to the near side boards. Suburban now rushes back in their own zone. That's Chris Yorty. Yorty trying to work it out. Good forechecking there by Lower Bucks in that last series. Yeah, and here's a breakaway. Here comes a breakaway. Suburban. Oh! Whoa! Brian Irvin with the quick glove hand. Folks, so Greg, if we have baseball scouts here, they'll love to see a quick hand like that. Well, I'll tell you what, that's Chris Wheatley coming down. The Penridge senior comes down on a breakaway, and Urban just stood his ground, cut down the angle perfectly, and showed a great glove there as he just snapped that one out of the air. Great so, save by Brian Urban to keep this game scoreless. So it'll be a face-off to the left of Brian Urban, and I'll tell you, folks, you're being treated to some real fine, classy high school all-star hockey at the annual college hockey event here. This is the second annual event, and this is the preliminary matchup of two games. And stay tuned, following tonight's game of coverage of the high school hockey, you will be seeing Villanova hosting Penn State Nittany Lions. Some fine collegiate Division I action coming up right after this on your home for hockey, Suburban Cable, as play continues at center ice. Here nice comes play. Here's Sean Young. Young with a poke check. Young does a great job. Score on the far side, tipped in. And on that play, but it was Young making that play on the far side. We'll have to get a look at the number. I believe it's McGinty. It Sean McGinty, indeed if it was, he covered that far post. But it was Sean Young. Well, that, those are teammates right there. No wonder that line's clicking a little bit. Great play by Sean Young. He gets the assist on the play, but he made the play. Poke check at the blue line, gains the zone in the corner, and then McGinty, the centerman, great job of going to the post, takes the feed and doesn't miss this time. So the Suburban All-Stars go up one to nothing on a goal by Sean McGinty, and it's gotta make their coaching staff happy. John Iowa and Andy Richards and Ross Morgan. And here comes Lower Bucks retaliating, and that time Woodbury comes up with a save, rebound, a follow-up, oh, and it just trickles on the outside of the post. And Woodbury there had a severe screen in front of him. Yeah, he didn't, know, he didn't know where that puck was for Three Florida. on none. Three on none. No offsides. On the far side. Oh! And there was Young knocking on the door and just fanned on it as he had a great pass from the right side. But, uh, Greg, how often do you have a three on none? Boy, they caught him in a line change, and they, they tried to cross on his pass to get the goalie out of position, and Young fans on the one-timer and doesn't get a chance to score. Uh, one thing about Sean Young, he's where he's supposed to be at the right time as play continues into the corner. Under six minutes left to go. Suburban up one to nothing. Play is kept in at the point and working his way down there. Billy for the Timmy Rank and Urban goes down. Play still control with Spurman. First time shot. Oh, and Urban that time with a pad save. And lower, Buck is kept back in play. Lower Buck's on her heels right now against this. This is a council rock line out there right now. Here comes a lower Buck's rush. A shot. And that was off the stick of Nick Belisi. Buck is kept back in play. And the puck comes back into the corner on the near side as Suburban Al tries to bring it out to center ice. Get the pass onto the far side. That's Neary. Neary goes around, one defender, shot right on in, oh, and a save by Urban, and a follow-up clear, nicely by Lower Bucks, just in time. Here's a counterattack on the opposite side. Here's a shot blocked nicely that time by Danoff. Rebound, follow-up, and the action now starting to open up in front of both nets. This is a typical All-Star game now, back and forth, a lot of offense. Kyle Neary tries to split the defense, has the play broken up. Puck is cleared all the way back down to the suburban zone and right off the bench, providing some forechecking there is Danny Fox for the Bucks County, lower Bucks. He's a weak shot, turn away by Woodbury, as now Suburban decides to bring it up the left side. Yeah, nice job by the goaltenders. Great save on Neary down at this end by Urban, and down at the other end on a rebound shot, Dave Woodbury stood his ground, took it off the shoulder, very nice save. And now it's lower Bucks trying to clear it out of their zone, but some good forechecking by Kyle Neary now, making it difficult for them now. Lower Bucks finds their way up. They dump it high in his zone. Handling it nicely as Woodbury steers it now onto the near side wing. And it's Peck. Ah, attempted pass to the right wing. Broken up by 
Bucks, and they turn around and bring it down into the near side corner. Hustling into it is Billy. Actually, is Kaffenberg. Kaffenberg making himself a nuisance everywhere. Good defensive stand now by Suburban as they work the puck out to center ice on the far side boards. Lower Bucks picks it up. Under four minutes left to go. One nothing. Score Suburban All Stars leading the Lower Bucks All Stars. Yeah, nice job of just playing solid defense right now by Suburban One. Shot just wide, and that's Randy Rangioni. Shot is controlled on the near side, and Lower Bucks trying to get it back in the groove as the puck goes back onto the far side. Now, once again, here comes a 2 on 2 at center ice. Temperley over skate. Billy Grossman gets a shot. That time is high and wide. Enough for a line change on the play. Centering pass right to the far side. Nobody there from Suburban as Lower Bucks controls the center ice. We've got a 2 on 3. Dump it into the zone. Woodbury holds on as some good pressure was coming in by the way of Danny Lenza. And again, good decision by Woodbury. Gloves it. Take the face off in your own zone. Your defense has been playing very well in front of you. Couple of scoring chances so far for Lower Bucks, but the defense clearing the rebounds, if any, are given up by Dave Woodbury so far. And then at the other end, I've been very impressed so far by Kyle Neary. We talked about him coming in. He has great skating speed and great puck handling. Just hasn't been able to put the puck behind in the net so far because Brian Urban's been very sharp tonight. Farris and Balser on the face off. It's kept in by Lower Bucks. Shot is blocked in front. Puck trickles over to the far side boards. It's backhanded, and it looks like we might have a penalty. First penalty of the game going to be called, and it yes. looks like it might be against Suburban. It is. It's going to be against number 82, Nate Smith, the freshman from Sheltonham. So lower box goes on our first power play of the evening. So we've had a little bit of everything here in the first period. We've got about 2.56 left to go. Suburban in front, one to nothing. We're going to have our first power play situation, and Lower Bucks will have the advantage, and uh, it'll be a real test for the penalty-killing unit of Suburban. Yeah, and the guy you want to watch out on the power play is Dan Lenza. Five, it's only 5'10", but he's got a great scoring touch in front of the net. Okay, puck over to Nidek. Nidek at the right point, slaps it right in. Nice stick save by Woodbury. He sticks it aside to the far side. Centering pass right in front. Oh, Woodbury, a waffle board save, and was able to jump on the rebound before Lower Bucks got a stick on it. Well, I'll tell you what, that's, that's just great goaltending because walking right in front was Billy Ferris from Pensbury. Walks out in front, great pass in front, one-on-one -on -one against the goalie, and great job again by Woodbury to stand his ground, didn't give up much of the net, and makes the save. Two saves so far on the power play in just 15 seconds. Lower Bucks chance to tie this thing up with the power play. Mike Gadach on the face-off for Lower Bucks. At the right point, it'll be Billy Mooney. And inside in the slot area will be Dave Creech. Play is underway, comes back, Mooney shot, right on in, stick save, and a nice clear by Suburban. Puck comes back out to center ice as lower bucks. Good pressure there, forcing the pass to the far side. It was a four on three advantage, and into the zone go the lower bucks all-stars. They carry it, and leading the way is Davey Creech. Creech checked off the play. Puck is now still held up by lower bucks. On the far side, now we've got a whistle as the net was knocked off its mooring. We've got a stoppage in the action. 2.17 left to go in the first period, and 1.21 left to go on the Lower Bucks All-Star power play. Yeah, you know, we talked, Lauren, in the pregame that you know, it would be a wide open game. We'll see a lot of scoring. The poor goaltenders are gonna be in for it tonight, and so far it's been the goaltenders dominating. Brian Urban for Lower Bucks has been very good, and I've been very, very impressed by the play of Dave Woodbury, the senior from North Penn, great stick. He makes some good stick saves so far in his power play. Puck is kept in the play as Lower Bucks comes up with a face off. Here comes a shot over to the right side. Mooney has it, winds up. Oh, and a great leg save. And the puck's deflected the entire length of the rink. That takes some real guts. Yeah, that's that's Tim Rink from Council Rock going down there. No regard for his body. Blocks a shot. And to show you how hard that shot was, it went all the way back where Brian Urban had to play it up to his teammates. Boy, what an endorsement for the manufacturer of those shin pads. <laughs> As play continues in front of the lower box net, comes over to Fox. He can't hold on to it. Hustling back, there's Timmy Rink. Rink clears it out to center ice, and here come the All-Stars. Neary. Neary tries to go against three defenders, is ridden off the play. Puck is loose, followed up. Suburban still, they play a little possession. Smart play with 30 seconds left on the power play. Here comes Suburban again. Here's Neary, spun around, still has the puck. Tries to get it over to Young, shot! Oh! And what a sensational shorthanded opportunity. Shot was just wide. And again, Neary sets up Young, who, as we saw last year in the playoffs for Council Rock, when they went on to win the 
suburban one leg he's all over the place with scoring opportunities from every possible op option on the ice Vinny Stendardo had a nice follow-up shot turned away by Woodbury and now it's last minute of play and just seconds left and uh, what a sensational sensational job of killing off that penalty the suburban all-stars did yeah nice job and they actually, actually had a better scoring opportunity than lower bucks did on the power play. Well, you know, that we do find that in hockey, especially in the pros, uh, Greg. There are some teams that seem to respond to the disadvantage, and actually they make better use of the arena and the rank. And a lot of times it's when you're the team with the power play, you're putting so much pressure and you're crowding so many people into the zone, you have a big leg block where the puck rebounds out the center ice, and you got a speedster. The Flyers used to do that with Ricky McLeish years ago. Well, that's exactly what happened on that shorthanded breakaway opportunity because Su Suburban 1 tried to clear the puck. It was knocked down in center ice by a stick from Lower Bucks, who then proceeded forward, but it went right to the stick of Neary, who had a 2 on one breakaway with Sean Young. Young just couldn't put it away. And Suburban tries to control Brian Ball on the near side, centering pass, broken up. Now it's kept in play. Good can't hold on to it. Now it comes out, here comes a potential two on one. Andrzejewski attacking the puck, trying to get a stick on it. Under 30 seconds left to go in the first period. Play continues now at center ice. Here comes lower box. They dump it in along the right wing boards. Charging into it is Danny Britt. Britt now goes behind the net, lays a nice check. Puck is picked up by a teammate. Waning seconds, here's a shot. Oh, and Woodbury couldn't hold on to it. But Lower Bucks just couldn't get any wood on it. Puck is loose now. Four seconds, three shot, pad save. Rebound on the near side, and that'll just about do it. So at the end of the first period, it's the Suburban High School All-Stars leading the Lower Bucks All-Stars by a score of one to nothing. A good little flurry there late by Lower Bucks. It was set up by a crunching check in the corner by Dan Britt. And Britt started that thing out. Great check in the corner, set up two quality scoring opportunities in front. But it was Dave Woodbury again, good stick saves, controlled the rebounds, and did exactly what he had to do to post a shutout in the first period. So as both teams go to the benches and take care of business, our action continues here momentarily in the second period. And I'll just say, a, a pretty impressive first period of hockey action between these two teams, Greg. One goal, great goaltending, some great passing, great checking, great open-end hockey, a little bit of everything, power play. So uh, pretty impressive hockey for these young guys of out of high school. Yeah, and you saw at about the six, seven-minute mark into this game how the, they started gelling together as teammates and line mates because, you know, we mentioned not a lot of work together and stuff like that. Nobody knew who was playing with who probably, and then, the, the only goal scored tonight so far was by Nate McGinty off a great feed by Sean Young in front. And what happened was the Suburban One League coaches put together a line made up of Thanks, just Council Rock players with McGinty, Skinner, and Young. And that line sort of jump-started Suburban One and got him the goal. The goal set up on a great play by Young, poke check at the blue line. Gained the zone in the corner and a great pass in front to a wide open McGinty who knocked it home past Brian Urban for the only goal of the first first period. Yeah, I'll tell you, Sean Young really making things happen. And uh, one of the, his attributes is he's very quick. It's good stick handling, knows his way around. And I'll tell you, also is able to read his teammates as well. So both teams have switched ends and it'll be now suburban all-stars moving from left to right and lower bucks from right to left. And, and suburban in the light colored jerseys it looks as if both goaltenders remain the same here at the start of the yeah. second period i'd expect him to switch around the midpoint of the game which would be halfway through the second period play underway here in the second period suburban all stars with a one nothing lead but here comes lower box on the play play on the far side no penalty as a lower box player went down as they were trying to crack the slot zone in front of the net puck is loose on the far side puck is dumped in intended pass on the far side of Josh Balser, he can't hold on to it. Checked off the play as the game picking up a little more physical intensity along the way. Yeah, and big hit that time on Smith down in the corner as he tried to get the puck. Janata's shot from the point is sticked aside there by Urban. Back come lower box, three on three, even matchup steered around to Woodbury. Woodbury now behind his 
own net as the puck is cleared along the far side boards. Now out to center ice. Four checking there. Lower Bucks trying to keep it in the zone. They steal the puck. They flip it back into the far side. Yeah, they, nice. they just want to play some dump and chase hockey right now. Bang it in the corners. Try and get something out in front for an open shot in the slot. Some good work there by Billy Farris. Farris trying to pressure in the zone. Good four checking. He's followed up there by Jeff Polk. Play is kept back at the point, and that's Mike Pasillo. Pasillo now has two Suburban All-Stars tied up. He's got some teammate, freezes the puck. It'll be good enough for a face-off with under 14 minutes left to go in the second period. Suburban All-Stars with a one to nothing lead. Yeah, good early scoring opportunity for Lower Bucks, but a solid defensive play. You mentioned no penalty on the play. I didn't think a penalty deserved to be called because he played the body as well as the puck. And just, if anything, it was going to be called as interference. But he did a nice job of keeping himself between the puck and the offensive player and allowed his defense to come back and clear the puck out of danger. Our officials tonight, Scott Adams and John Craig, and doing a fine job and good to be back with them here at face-off circle as well. The puck is dumped into the lower box zone as they try to steer it around the far side. And here's good. that council rock line once again of Young, Skinner, and McGinty. Once again, now it's Suburban trying to keep it in on the far side on that play. Over there is Danoff. Danoff now dumps it in. Buck is behind. Oh, a quick one. Center right in front of the crease. Suburban just couldn't get any stick on it. Now the puck is kept back in his own. Here comes Young again, trying to go through a trio of defenders. He's ridden off the play. Puck is flipped back out to center ice. And here's a three on two for lower box as they squirm back into the air. Danoff now defensively getting the job done. Puck is flipped back out to center ice. Lower box now flicks it down the left wing. Hustling back there will be Sean McGinty. McGinty circles behind his own net, drops it off on the near side for Kaufman. Kaufman now dumps it out the center ice, handled by Duffy. Duffy drops Ooh. it along the near zone, and here comes a break, and that's Nick Felici, and a laid off sides on that play. Uh, they're calling a tripping penalty. I'm not sure who it's on. Big hit on the sideboards that time by Kurt Kaufman from North Penn, and I don't know who they're calling him to go to the box here, but I think it's a tripping penalty and it is going to be a trimming penalty on Mike Gadash, who's the one who got hit along the boards. And as Kaufman tried to get back up and get into his defensive end, he was tripped up. So a power play opportunity once again. And this time it's going to be for the Suburban 1 All-Stars. Okay, so each team getting an opportunity to take advantage of the power play situation. Under 13 minutes left to go in the second period. And the shorthanded lower box team takes it into the zone. As they try to control, play a little puck possession. Puck is stealing, stolen away momentarily by Narog. Now it's picked up, flipped back into the zone, and on that play was Brian Ball. Puck is now loose. It's center ice on the far side, and we've got a delayed offside. Suburban leaves it go, and Lower Bucks clears it the length of the rink, and on the play is Woodbury. Suburban now brings it back into their own zone at the center ice. They carry a three-on-two into the zone, carry it nicely in there on that play is Danoff. Danoff now controls in the corner. Has got two defenders. Goes back along the far side boards. Back out to center on that play. Comes over to the near side. Works his way in. A shot, screenshot by Chris Yorty, just wide. Here's a slapper from the point, deflected in front. And that was Brian Ball getting some nice wood on it from the left point. Yeah, and he got a big screen in front that time. But again, Urban does a nice job of staying low, looking for the shot low. Anything up high, he's hoping it's going to hit him. If he stays low with his stick on the ice, he's going to try to see it and make the save late. Anything up high is a crapshoot right now for him. And he figured with the screen in front of high shot, it's not going to get through, so he'll stay low. He stayed low and made the save. Covered up the rebound, so there's no opportunity for a follow-up score. A minute, seven seconds left on the power play. Suburban with the man advantage. Nice win on the faceoff. Back to the point. Here comes a slapper right through a screen. Handled nicely in there by Irvin. And a good follow-up clear by Lower Bucks. Yeah, nice job of clearing out that rebound. His rink got off a good shot from the point. It was high. He made the save, but he gave up a rebound where if there's somebody there from Suburban 1 to knock it home, that's a great scoring opportunity. But the defensive player there knocks it away. Very well organized attack. Whoa! Dan Andrzejewski, the freshman. And what some offensive wizardry on that play as he just wound his way through the slot and it was like the moment he touched the puck Greg it appeared as though he knew for sure that that rubber would be hitting the net well he did a great job showed great speed through the neutral zone only he only has three goals coming into this game as a freshman still was chosen to the team and he did a great job of using the defenseman for a screen kept the puck low across the ice Urban didn't pick it up until it was too late, and by that time, the red light was flashing, and it's 2-0 Suburban one leg. 
Danny Andrzejewski tornadoed his way right through the center of the blue line in the slot and fired one in. Here comes Suburban again on the attack. Beecham on the far side, on the side of the net. Checked off the play. Lower Bucks trying to work it out of the zone. They bring it all the way out to center ice. Here comes Lower Bucks. Here's his skate race on the play. Hustling on towards Danny Britt. Danny now still has the puck. Good work in the corner. Not much help on the far side. That was a power play goal, by the way, by Andrzejewski. And here comes a slap shot wide of the net, intended for the far side corner, where it's going to be picked up by Beecham. Beecham on the far side boards, double team, holding on to the puck, now has some help. Puck is knocked in, out of the zone. Here comes a two-on-one. Lower Bucks on the play. They've got help on the far side of Britt. Oh, and a great save there by Woodbury as Britt was knocking on the door. Play is loose again on the near side. A Suburban tries to clear it out of the zone. They do. Here's a one-on-one -on -one as the puck rolls back towards the Lower Bucks net. Good follow-up there defensively by Kaffenberg. Yeah, again, a great opportunity for Lower Bucks with a two-on-one, but they just can't finish off their plays. Didn't get a lot of wood on it, but still a scoring opportunity that Woodbury again turned away. Kaufman brings it around the near side board, steers it out to center ice where it's picked up. Lower Bucks dump it back in the zone. Kaufman's got to hustle back there as Woodbury slows it down. Buck is loose, kept in there at the point by Kaffenberg. Actually, Schaefer, and the puck is again loose in there as we've got a pair of 19s out there for Lower Bucks. It's a favorite number as back comes Suburban. Shot just wide on, on that play was Chris Wheatley. Had a yeah. nice touch to that puck. And that play set up by the defenseman, not able to cover up the point. The puck got through him on a possible scoring opportunity for Lower Bucks. Instead, it turns into a two-on-one down the other way, and Wheatley missed the net. Nice give-and-go situation broken up there at center ice. Here comes Suburban again. The puck is loose on the far side boards. Now it's dumped back towards the Suburban end, where they'll be able to rush back there. Kaufman on the puck behind his own net. He's checked off the boards. He still has the puck. Some nice skating back there by Kirk Kaufman as the puck comes out on the near side. Good pressure at the point there by Scott Fife. Now the puck comes out to center ice. Here comes Suburban on the play. Skinner, Skinner shot, pad save, follow up. Oh, and Kaufman with a great follow up and a great save in the nets by Urban. Yeah, Urban made the initial save and then it was Britt who came back and got a stick to deflect that shot wide on the rebound. Here comes a one on one. Oh, a shot and a great save by Woodbury. Yeah, Woodbury again cutting down the angle and I believe that time that it was Bell that Woodbury. Belize Belize, came Belize, down. Yeah. <laughs> and he missed, he just didn't even get a shot off, really. We're giving the credit to Dave Woodbury in there, but uh, we'll have to see, is it Sam Wiener? Okay, we don't have the... Uh... No, it's still Woodbury, I believe, in nets. Anyhow, we'll, we'll find out whoever the goalie is in there. Great save, Suburban All-Stars, as play continues at center ice. Here it comes on the play. Skinner has it. Now it's knocked back to the far side. And Suburban All-Stars dump it down the left wing board. Hustling back there for the is Nidek. Nidek dumps it back out to center ice on the play. And here comes another break for Lower Bucks and a good play by the Suburban netminder as he came out and made a goal saving clear. Play continues. Suburban now has the puck stolen away. Good backhander out to the near side. Nice puck job, is loose. Uh, nice job by Nidek that time to cut across and cut off a break opportunity for Suburban 1. Chris Yorty back in his own zone, dumps it down the right wing, and on the way now, Neary. Neary's centering pass goes behind a teammate. Now we got a potential three-on-one. Here's a three-on-one situation as Lower Bucks couldn't pull the trigger as they carried in the zone, centering pass broken up. Puck is loose, under seven and a half minutes left to go in the second period. Here comes Neary with a three-on-two. Neary splits the defense over to the right side. Has the puck knocked off his stick on the near side corner. And now tries to work in the near side. Oh, and had the Urban down. He tried to flip it up. It went over. I uh, hit the crossbar, I think, on that shot. Neary, great job to walk out in front and bangs it off the crossbar. Helped that time from the pipes for Brian he, Urban. He already slides it up. It's Joe Santucci. So our apologies to Joe Santucci. We had incorrectly identified him as Woodbury, but the credit goes to everybody. It makes it needed. The goaltending has been... Perfect tonight for Suburban. They have the shutout, so guys, it really is a team effort, and they also have the lead, two to nothing. Now we're gonna have a goaltending change. Now we've got a goaltending change, so we're trying to Woodbury who was in there. And it's, uh, okay, so Woodbury was in there. Now it's gonna be Wiener, I believe. Yes. And also coming in now for the it'll be Sean Furlong from Ryan. So Sam Wiener of Germantown Academy. 
and Sean Furlong of Archbishop Ryan comes in. Sean's a junior, and Sam Wiener is a senior. Yeah, nice, and nice job on both ends. I mean, Urban gave up two, one on a screenshot, the other one on a pass across one time where he had no chance on. And down at the other end, Dave Woodbury, so far, my MVP of the game. I would say he had a really a strong game to come out, and he was very sharp from the opening faceoff, Greg, as play continues. So play continues now as Suburban carries back into their own zone as they regroup back there. And we've got under seven minutes left to go. Frank Janata dumps it up, and on the play now is Andrzejewski. Had a nice goal earlier here in the second period, a power play goal. Suburban second of the night. Puck is dumped along the far side, hustling over to his Danny Murray. Danny Murray springs it free, just in the neutral zone. It's picked up. On the play now, hustling up is Brink. Brink now has the puck dropped off, followed up play. Knocked out of the zone by Lower Bucks. Here comes Lower Bucks as they carry it over to the blue zone. On the zone is Rangione. Rangione goes on to the near side shot, screenshot, and a nice save on the play by Wiener, and it's finally cleared, but Rangione now with a great solo effort. Yeah, I'll tell you what, here comes Suburban 1 once again. Wiener, early test, makes the save, doesn't give up the rebound, and Andrew Juski, nice job of clearing the puck as he went down and helped out his goaltender. Bill Mooney doing a nice defensive job for Lower Bucks just as Suburban was attacking that near side of the net zone and sending a shaken up Suburban player to the bench. Play is loose, kept in play on the far side there, nicely by Chris Wheatley. Buck is loose on the near side boards. Lower Bucks trying to clear it out, they do. Out the center ice it comes. Buck is loose, now it's broken up, follow up on the play, Murray can't get a stick on it, he dumps it into the zone. Five and a half minutes left to go. As a line change for Lower Bucks, clears the ice. Oh, a long up ice pass intended for Nate Smith. He couldn't hold on to it. And it's followed up there by Lower Bucks. Yeah, Smith hanging back at the blue line there. Almost got a breakaway opportunity. Couldn't control the pass. But Nate. by tipping it, knocked off the icing call. Lower Bucks with a four on three at center ice. They carry across on the zone. It's Billy Farris. Farris now has it stolen away. Buck is picked up. Suburban can't hold on to it. Quick switch of possession. It's center ice. Wheatley dumps it into the zone all the way down. Hustling back there is Kenny Good. Good. A nice job so far by Suburban. One in their defensive zone to just cover things up. They're not letting a lot of good scoring opportunities get on their goaltenders. Wheatley now has, oh, and Kaufman catches. Unbelievable, Sean Furlong out of the net. I don't know what might have happened there. Well, I'll tell you what happened there. A scramble in front earlier knocks the stick out of the hands of Sean Furlong. Furlong thought the puck was cleared up along the boards, but Kaufman keeps it in, just throws it to the net while Furlong goes to get his stick and he has an empty net, the puck just rolls in for a fluke goal with 4.44 left to play here in the second period. Wow, so you got three fours and he got three scores. It should be three to nothing, but also doing a nice job for checking on the near side boards was Chris Wheatley. He tied up like two defenders and Kaufman just had the open shot. Great ice rink awareness that the goaltender was out of position, just flopped it into an empty net. Yeah, that's a good job by Wheatley to tie up those two guys because that allowed Kaufman to just pick up the puck and shoot it at the empty net, and just a mental breakdown that time by Sean Furlong. So Lower Bucks now trying to regroup, under five minutes left to go in the second period. Lower Bucks trailing by three as the puck is controlled near side boards, goes into the zone, and both teams now trying to step it up a little bit physically on the play now, Sean Young. Gets a shot on that play, and he works it back on the far side. Now, looks like I have a delayed penalty called, and it might be against Suburban this time. I think it's going to be on Nate McGinty for a holding call or a possible trip in the offensive zone. And that's not where you want to take a penalty in the offensive zone when you have the puck and you have some pressure. But McGinty is going to go off for two minutes and a chance now to get back into the game for lower bucks. They really need to score on this power play. So. Not many penalties in tonight's game. This is only the third penalty call this evening, the second against Lower Bucks, and it was the very dangerous Suburban All-Stars capitalizing on their only power play opportunity, and lo and behold, it was a freshman, Andrew yeah. Juski. And he did a nice job of scoring, coming down the middle, getting the shot off with a screen get it, to get the score. Lower Bucks 0 for 1 on the power play. Had a couple of scoring chances, but really, Suburban one had a great shorthanded opportunity in that power play and came up empty on that also, but they did a nice job of killing it off. Stay tuned, folks, coming up right after this preliminary matchup of the All-Stars of Lower Bucks County and Suburban Hall Star. It'll be the college coaches 
college hockey game of the year featuring the two division teams, Division I teams, Villanova Wildcats hosting the Penn State Nittany Lions. All the action coming to you here on your home for hockey, Suburban Cable TV. Play continues behind the net as it's worked out. Now the center ice, lower box controls it down the near side, hustling back in his own zone is Frank Giannata. Frank quickly dumps it back out the center right. Here's a potential break on the play. They go right on in. Oh, and a clip from behind, just as Peter Narog was about to take it. It looks like it'll be a penalty slashing call. Well, they're going to call him for tripping. Now the question is, does he get a penalty shot for it? That's an yeah. unadulterated breakaway yeah. right there. And he's pulled down from behind, never had a chance to get the shot off. In my opinion, that's a perfect opportunity to call the penalty shot. But I guess in the All-Star game, they're not going to do it instead. You're going to see number 19, Mike Schaefer, go to the box two minutes for tripping, and that negates the power play for lower box. That would. If there's an opportunity to call a penalty shot, that you correctly identified it, Greg, that would be the one to have an opportunity where the skater would have, would have virtually been one-on-one -on -one with the goaltender. It was taken down from behind. Yeah, and I mean, they're in on the breakaway there. Again, second time in as many power play opportunities. Uh, Lower Bucks has given up a shorthanded breakaway opportunity. So the teams will be even with one skater short for the next minute and 15 seconds. And then when that expires, the very dangerous power play unit of Suburban All-Stars will have a 45 second advantage as play continues here in the second period. Suburban in front by a score of three to nothing. And Florian, you gotta watch out right now. A lot of open ice playing four on four. This is where your big skaters like Neri, who's on the ice, can really flourish with a lot of open ice to work with. Danoff brings it off to the near side. Puck is spun around. Play is now at center ice. Hustling up there is Kaufman. Kaufman's got a goal on the night from the right point. Trying to pick up another one as well. This play continues behind the net. Lower box dumps it along the boards. Can't keep it into the zone. And Suburban will be forced to regroup at center ice. Here they go. Leading his way is Neary. He's had a strong night of all-star high school hockey. Carries around. Circles behind the net on the far side. Still has the puck. Good possession by Suburban, nice stick check back there from Pat Duffy. Duffy knocks it back out to center ice and it's followed up there by Nick Belisi. Yeah, Belisi. Neary, Neary tried to do a little too much with the puck that time, but the thing I like about him, after he gave it up in the offensive zone, he came back and covered for his defenseman who pinched up and was able to come back and pick up the puck in the neutral zone. Nice two on two opportunity. Danoff dumps it into the zone and the Suburban team opts for a line change on the play. Approaching the two-minute mark, the penalty has expired, and now it's the power play for Suburban All-Stars. Suburban with a man advantage. Remember the last time they had it, they scored on the power play. And now Yordi, he tries to keep it in the zone. He does. Puck is controlled on the near side board. Skating his way in is Andrzejewski. He's checked off the play. We've got a whistle as the net was dislodged off its moorings. And we've got 144 left to go with Suburban holding a comfortable three-to-nothing lead. Look at Andrzejewski. Solid hockey player, picks up the puck along the boards, sees an opening, so he goes right to the slot. You'll love to shoot from the slot if you're an offensive player in hockey. Came across, and that time the defenseman boxed, got his stick on the puck, deflected it up out of play, thus the face off in the offensive zone. 26 seconds left on the power play opportunity, and we'll see now if they can take advantage. Andrew Juski, center iceman, he has the lone power play goal tonight for Suburban 1. Andrew Juski going against a very tall Kaffenberg, 170, 6'2", he measures. As now it's Central Bucks or Lower Bucks trying to control behind their own net, trying to work on the zone. Good forechecking. They do clear it. Under a minute and a half left to go in the second. Coming out as Wiener to slow it down. Suburban regroups as they head back up ice. Pass cross ice, broken up nicely. Puck is followed up again by Suburban. Dump it back out. Circling back. Kaffenberg has it. He's going against three defenders. Holds now, takes a swipe at it. Puck ends up behind a Suburban net. Approaching the final minute of the second period, three to nothing. Suburban leads. Lower Bucks All Stars. Puck is dumped into the zone. Hustling back there defensively is Billy Mooney. Mooney having a strong night defensively for Lower Bucks, as the puck is continually controlled by Lower Bucks. And on the play now, as Andrzejewski in the corner. Here's a shot right in the point through a crowd, hits a few pads, and a nice follow-up by the netminder Sean Furlong. Nice job by Furlong to make the save. Good one-time shot there by Yordy coming across. Gets the pass, comes across, one times it, got it up a little bit too high, than it, more than he would like to, which gave the goaltender Furlong a chance to make the pad save with his chest and then cover the rebound. He keeps that a little bit lower, it has a chance to get a screen or a tip and somehow find its way into the net. 
Josh Balser on the faceoff. Janata at the point, tries to get it back, a little bit weak. Hustling up on the follow-up was Chris Wheatley, and Furlong quickly freezes the puck up with just 39 seconds left to go in the second. A nice job again. Suburban one keeping great pressure on the defensive zone of lower box, getting some scoring opportunities. Not any great quality scoring shot chances, but they're putting the puck on net, and we saw earlier what happens if you put the puck on net. Maybe something freaky happens, and it goes in. So Balser now tries to maintain control of it. That's lower box as the penalty has expired and both teams at full strength in the final 30 seconds of the second period. Puck is dumped into the suburban zone. Good follow up on the play on the far side. Lower box trying to get some wood on it. Danny Britt in the corner doing his thing. Gets the puck over to the near side and that's Farris. Farris can't hold on it. Mooney keeps it into the point. Now comes out to center ice. Now here comes suburban with a two on two on the play. On the far side, Josh Balser again. Keeps it in. Four seconds left to go. And that would just about do it for the second period. So at the end of two periods, it's the Suburban High School Hockey League All-Stars leading the All-Stars of the Lower Bucks High School Hockey League by a score of three to nothing. And once again, Greg, not disappointed with play here in the second period. Oh, good end then action, scoring chances for both squads. Suburban one able to capitalize two times. And again, you got to mention the good goaltending. I mean, the, if, with the exception of the one mental breakdown by Sean Furlong early on where he went to get his stick thinking the puck had been cleared out of his own, resulting in the third goal of the game scored by C Kurt Kaufman. The goaltenders have really been the dominant story in this game. That's right. And we talked about in the uh, pregame show, and I mentioned it as an aside about the youthful players that make up the roster of the Suburban High School Hockey League All-Stars. And I'll tell you, I don't know, maybe I had a premonition, but Andrzejewski, the freshman from Archbishop Wood, did not disappoint me, especially in the second period when he came up with a big league, and I should say big league quality type of goal, a power play goal. Yeah, he came down, really a nice one-on-one -on -one move at center ice to get himself open, came over the line, he was a defenseman for a screen and put a nice low wrist shot into the left-hand corner as he beat Brian Urban down low. That really opened things up, made it two to nothing, and shot on goal total so far through two periods suburban won 24 lower bucks with 17 and 17 saves down at this end so far by the suburban one goaltender combination of dave woodbury and sam wiener although wiener really only faced about three shots there as he came in with about seven minutes left in the second period now he gets his opportunity here in the third period Okay, so as the uh, intermission period continues here, they will resurface the ice at the face-off circle. We want to remind you, stay tuned for third period action coming up right after these words on your home for hockey, Suburban Cable, and tonight's preliminary game to be followed by the annual, the second annual college hockey coaches hockey matchup between two division hockey teams, and that's Penn State Nittany Lions are in town to battle with the Villanova Wildcats, Greg, and I know that should be an exciting game for us to cover as well. Yeah, we'll have a fun time with that one. So this one hasn't disappointed. Hopefully that one will be as good as what we've seen here through the first two periods. Stay tuned. More hockey action coming up right after these words on your home for hockey, Suburban Cable TV. Welcome back to Faceoff Circle Hockey Arena in Warminster, Pennsylvania for the third and final period of tonight's preliminary matchup featuring the high school all-stars of the Suburban High School Hockey League and the Lower Bucks High School Hockey League. Florian Kemp along with Greg Betts and Greg, uh, first two periods, very impressive hockey. Yeah, fun, a lot of open ice, some skating, solid defense, which I'm very surprised about. And the goaltending's also been pretty sharp tonight. A uh, couple of goals, 3-0 in favor of Suburban 1-1 one, one in the first, 2 in the second, and they lead 3 to nothing. So it's Suburban moving from right to left. They're in the light jerseys and lower box moving from left to right. They carry into the zone, centering pass right through the slot area. It's going to be cleared out by Skinner. Skinner on the far side, tied up, kicks it up ahead, trying to get it to Young. Young is driven off the play. Play is controlled at center ice on the play. Hustling back there is Danny Fox. Fox dumps it over to the left wing boards. Peck is dumped in the zone. We're going to have a offsides called on the far side 
And we want to mention the goaltender for the second half of tonight's game, Sam Wiener, senior from Germantown Academy. We're joined up here in the booth by Mrs. Wiener and also by Mrs. Neary. We want to thank them for their assistance in helping us identify some players. We also want to congratulate Sam, who's been accepted to Hobart College. And if indeed he decides to attend, we wish him all the best. And hopefully he can keep in touch with us here at Suburban Cable as we like to pass on the news of former high school standouts that we've covered over the years. Yeah, he's a good program up at Hobart, and he can prosper up there. And, you know, one of the main products that come out of this Germantown Academy program is a goaltender himself and Mike Richter, who's an all-star for the New York Rangers. And Kyle Neary's a junior. He'll be back again for another year, but we understand the college scouts are hot after his trail. We'd like to wish him and his family continued success in his career. And we'll look forward to cover him in the playoffs. Here's a potential break down the far side. And on the play, coming is Foxy. And a shot right on. And there's Wiener with a sharp save on the near side. Puck is cleared. It's kept back in play. Now it's steered out to center ice. Here's a break on the play. Hustling down for it as they try to carry it into the zone on that play near you again. And again, both those breakaways not great scoring opportunities because both times the player's coming down on a weird angle and the goalie only has to make sure he covers the short side with the net. Three. Oh, and a tip in, and it might have been Peter Narog. Pete Narog possibly on the far side post as we'll have to get the identity of that, but it's just a matter of open end hockey play in front of the slot. And I think Suburban might have had a player position here on that far post was able to take advantage of it. Yeah, it was Narog with the goal as he stood in front, was tied up. Good pass coming across. And even though Narog's tied up, he keeps his stick on the ice and is able to redirect the pass in behind the stun Sean Furlong, who really had no chance to make a save there. So, Suburban Cable, sub, excuse me, Suburban High School Hockey League All-Stars go up by a score of four to nothing on a goal by Narog, Pete Narog. Plays kept back in play. They flick it back into the zone. That time was Billy Grossman. Peter Nera gets the credit for the goal. Here comes a break. Lower a box with the shot. Oh, they had Wiener do the splits. And he was able to get the blade of his skate to come up with a save. And again, he did a nice job of waiting for the offensive player to make the first move. Then he goes out with the butterfly, does the splits, and makes the save. On that last goal for him, the assist, Robert Beecham with a nice pass in front to set up the goal. Here comes Kaffenberg, shot right into the midsection, and Wiener holds on with a crunch on his torso. Great save and great action, breaking his way down again is Kaffenberg. But again, good situational goaltending by Sam Wiener coming out, playing the angles, playing the breakaway, and coming out of the net to cut down any shooting angles. That time really didn't give any kind of opportunity for Katzenberg, who had to shoot it right into his midsection. He covers up, thus the face off in the offensive zone. Face off, quick possession, quick clear. Now here comes a clearing play out of their own zone. Three on two on the play. Andrzejewski fires a wrister in and out of the glove. Oh, follow up on the rehound. And somehow the puck was shot wide on the near side. But boy, Furlong being tested severely there. But once again, it was that blazing speed of Andrzejewski making things happen in front of that lower Bucks net. Yeah, blazing speed plus a good hard shot. And what happened was Furlong couldn't hang on to it. It rolling loose in the crease, and Doug Dietz, wide open net. Every opportunity to pop it home, and he pops it over top of the net. Can't get it in. Then a nice shot. Can't regain his possession, does Dietz. He cuts off a nice shot, but again, Furlong kicks it to the corner. Now a face-off in the offensive zone, and Suburban 1 putting on some good pressure here. That time it was Brian Ball getting a shot in from the point. Face-off is cleared all the way. The length. He already hustles back there in front of his own net. Works it back out towards the right wing. Now the puck is back out at center ice, hustling back on his ball again. He carries it up along the far side, dumps it into the zone. Urban can't slow it down. Puck is going to be cleared by lower bucks. They try to work it out. Ball again, trying to do the job. Can't get it done. Comes the length of the ice, and that time Wiener with a nice clear, intended for the white wing. It's picked up by Danny Britt. Britt having a strong night as a member of the lower bucks all-stars as well. Puck is kept back in play, and here comes Suburban again. They can't hold it. And Puck changing possession frequently here at center ice. And now it's lower Bucks with a rush. Running into four defensive players from Suburban. All-Stars, they control again on the near side. That's Brian Bolt. Clears it over to the right wing boards. Here's a potential break on the play. They hustle in. Nate Smith shot is wide right through the crease. The puck is loose on the near side. Now they bring it back over to center ice. 
switch sides. Nice passing on the play as a follow up Suburban All-Stars dump it back into the zone. Followed up with some four checking, trying to work it out as Dave Creech. Creech now brings it up to the right wing to Mooney. Here comes Mooney from the right side, winds up, shot, oh, score! And Mooney beats Wiener low on the near post. Yeah, Wiener doesn't make the save that time, but Mooney, a great play, gets possession in his defensive end, comes out, avoids a hip check opportunity by Tim Rank, walks down over the blue line, winds up, and a good slapper low across the ice. If they keep the puck low, a lot of things can happen. Wiener doesn't keep his stick down low enough, and it gets through the pad into the net for the first goal by Lower Bucks with 10.50 left to play here in the third period. Mooney had some great help from his defensive unit working that puck out along the near side boards in his own end, and he saw the opening up the right wing, Greg, and took it upon himself to initiate that play and take it into the zone, and where that time he waited for Wiener to commit himself a little prematurely and then just beat him low. Good shot, good play. Yeah, it's always great when you're a defenseman to keep the shot low across the ice because as we mentioned earlier, you get deflections, screens, and it's much tougher to stop a, sh a shot low across the ice because you got to do it with your feet and your, your eyes are up high, your feet are down low. It's tougher to get that coordination to make the save low than it is up high where you can make the Glover pad save. So Bill Mooney gets the first goal of the evening for the Lower Bucks All-Stars. They trail by three. It's Suburban leading Lower Bucks by a score of four to one. A little over 10 minutes left to go in the game. Enough time for Lower Bucks to come back with a couple of scores. But right now it's Suburban maintaining a four checking and there's a puck cleared out of the slot area. Kept in at the play at the right point by Rink. Buck is loose again now into the far right side. And it's Suburban with another dangerous centering pass, but it's cleared right out of the slot area. Puck is kept in play, and here comes Young. Young on the right wing, tries to cut inside, slowed up a minute, gets into the slot area, tries to make the pass. Weak backhander, stopped by a defender. Now another clear is cleared out to the far side, and on the play is Danny Fox. Fox can't get it out. It's kept in play at the right point. Once again, Lower Bucks trying to work it out of the zone. Here's a centering pass over to the left wing. Fox on the play, carries in left wing, checked off the play, and a good defensive follow-up on there by Timmy Rink. Yeah, good pressure by Suburban. One of the guys at Council Rock line, putting the pressure on. A couple of scoring opportunities. Couldn't put the puck in the net, though. Fast-paced hockey action here in the third period. Approaching nine minutes left. We're going to have an offsides called against Suburban on the play. 9-16 left to go with Suburban in front, 4-1. Yeah, Robert beats him a little upset there. He had a nice chance to walk in and get a shot off, but unfortunately for him, they got Harris Danoff in the zone a step too early. Offsides call, face off outside the blue line right now. Standing room crowd only here at the face-off Circle Hockey Arena in Warminster, Pennsylvania. This is the second annual college hockey coaches night, we should say, with a preliminary game of two all-star hockey teams from our two high school leagues. Here's a shot wide on the far side. Followed up over there is Danny Murray. Murray keeps it in the play. Into the corner now as Suburban's trying to work it out. They get a hand on it. Now they work it back out towards they get it out of their own zone. Here's a two on two. Pass comes over to the near side. That's Grossman. His shot right off the pads. Follow up. Shot is wide. A rebound is cleared that time. On the far side, here's Suburban again. Suburban now tries to work the way in. They freeze the puck up. Under nine minutes left to go. It'll be a face-off deep in the lower Bucks all-star end. Well, good scoring opportunity. Grossman comes down. Good save by Furlong. And a rebound sat out there and another scoring opportunity. But down at the defensive end for Suburban, one, a two-on-one break. Comes up empty as Katzenberg shoots it wide. But it's a great defensive play by Danoff to stay in the middle there and take away the pass. And by Wiener, with the defenseman doing a nice job to take away the pass, all he had to concentrate on was a shot, so he cut down the angle very well and forced him to shoot the puck wide. Puck is cleared again by Lower Bucks out to center ice as they try to build up their attack. They dump it down into the corner. Out comes Wiener, slows it down nicely, followed up by Brian Ball on the far side. Baldy knocks it off the boards. Nice stick handling on that far side by Dougie Dietz. Three on one. Dietz winds up, shot is wide on the near side off the glass. Come in, kept in nicely at the point by Brian Ball. Ball still has it, dumps it in, into the corner, shot for the near side, score! Right out of the left wing, but it was Brian Ball keeping it in at the point as we take a look who the left winger was. I believe it's going to get an be identity a... on that number. And That's a bad angle goal for him. one, exactly. Bad angle goal, and it looks like it's Bobby Beecham. Yeah, Beecham off the far side, and I think what happened was Furlong again 
thinking something's going to happen. Well, it wasn't. He's coming across looking for a pass in front, and instead, Beecham throws it at the net, hits off his blocker, and goes into the net. Second time tonight that Furlong has been caught out of position results in a goal. But I'll tell you, nice work at the point there. The point man, Brian Ball, at the left point, just as Lower Bucks tried to clear that puck, he kept it in play, knocked it into that left wing corner, and it was Beecham just firing away, getting the fifth goal of the night for Suburban. And you see it with 7.58 left to go in the game. Suburban in front, 5-1. to one. Stay tuned, collegiate hockey action coming up as Penn State Nittany Lions are in town to do battle against the Villanova Wildcats. Yeah, assists on the goal go to Dietz and Ball, and the goal makes it 5-1 to one in favor of Suburban 1. That was all set up for, and if you remember, by the three-on-one opportunity created at mid-ice, they came down, Dietz missed the net, but they mentioned Ball, a nice job to keep the puck in the offensive zone, which results in the goal. Puck is kept in off the play nicely as Suburban tries to control again on that play is Timmy Rank. Rank now has it, gets it back to the point. Waitley shot right on in. Oh, a pad save nicely by Furlong. Rebound's going to be picked up by Servo. Back again, Wheatley shot, deflected in front, still knocked out to the far right side. On the play, shot again is blocked in front as the puck is cleared along the near side boards. Puck now over. Kept in play by Wheatley. Wheatley tries to keep it in at the point. And a puck is still change of possession, kept in nicely that time by Frank Janata. Janata has it stripped away. Here comes Lower Bucks. Lower Bucks now struggling to clear the puck out from their own net. Yeah, great forechecking and offensive pressure by Suburban One. They got a couple of big saves at the blue line by their defenseman to keep the puck in and kept the pressure on. It looked almost like a power play situation. Here it goes. A nice steal in front there by Sean McGinty. Just couldn't get the stick directed down. Here comes a wind-up shot from the point, blocked by a defender in front. Here comes another play around on the near side. Hustling around is Matt Skinner. A little Skinner. too much passing there by Suburban One. They had a chance for a wide-open shot in front. Instead, McGinney tried to pass it off to his teammate Skinner for an open net, and the pass got broken up for no shot opportunity at all. Puck is dumped into the corner around the far side as it goes all the way around. Buck is now going to be kept back in play. Suburban tries to clear it out of their own zone. As they control, here comes Young. Young skates around behind his net. Kept in play on that far side there by Skinner. Skinner now is pinned by a trio of attackers. And he tries to work his way along the near side. And the puck works his way. We've got a stoppage in the action with six minutes and five seconds left to go in the game. Boy, just last time down for Suburban 1, McGinty right in front, point blank, shot opportunity, tries a little behind the back pass to his teammate, good idea, but a little too fancy for that situation, the pass was broken up, and no shot opportunity, instead of having a great scoring chance, they come away empty with no scoring chance. Well, Suburban All-Stars doing a fine job of maintaining that pressure, and also creating opportunities, but give a lot of credit to the Lower Bucks All-Stars, they continue to try, to try to battle back into the game. Yeah, I mean, great defense on both squads. I thought this would be like a, an 11-9 game, something like that. Instead, we've only seen six goals total through almost three and a half period, two and a half periods. Here comes Kyle Neary. Neary circles around, kicks it over to the far side. A shot reflected in front. And this time, as they try to make it around, is Fox. Fox now has it dumped over to the far side corner. He controls it, dumps it over now on that play as Lower Bucks tries to clear it out of their own zone. Puck is kept back in play. Covering into the corner, centering pass. Broken up, here comes Neary circling around. Neary dumps it right through the slot area to the far side, gets it on the stick of Peter Narok. Narok now drops it back. Here's an attempted pass to the slot area, kept in from the point, now over to the right wing as they try to battle it back. Play is kept back in. Now, Puck is cleared out to center ice. Here comes lower box, attempted pass, broken up nicely. Nice defensive play by Chris Yorty. Yeah, great job by Yorty to get back. That's almost a two on none break. Yorty busts it back and is able to break it up before they even get into the offensive zone. Puck is controlled now at center ice on the far side as Furlong has it. He's under five minutes left to go in the game. Lower box needs to turn on the offensive thrust to try to get some scores to tie this game up. We've got an offsides pass with 444 left to go in the game. I'll tell you what, Suburban 1 has really dominated this third period. They've kept the puck in the offensive zone. Good forechecking. They're not allowing the defensemen to carry the puck out. They're all over them. Almost looks like they've had like a four or five minute power play down at that end. But again, 
can't really get the puck in the net. They've scored once in this period with some good goaltending down at that end by Sean Furlong to deny them on a couple of opportunities. Yeah, he's also been assisted a lot by his defenseman right in front of the net as well. Here comes a slap shot, a bouncer from center ice, handled nicely by Wiener. And following up behind the net is Timmy Rink. Rink tries to get it out to the far side. And we've got a high stick on the play with 434 left to go in the game. Yeah, the high stick called. What happened there was the puck was up high, knocked out of the air by a stick above the shoulders. You can't keep the stick above the shoulders or else it's going to be ruled a high stick. And that's exactly what happened is the lower Bucks guy knocked it down with the high stick. And in th that case, the faceoff comes all the way back down now into the lower Bucks defensive zone. Stay tuned, some fine collegiate hockey coming up in this second annual college coaches hockey matchup here at the Faceoff Circle Arena in Warminster, Pennsylvania. Villanova Wildcats hosting the Nittany Lions of Penn State. Some guaranteed fine Division I college hockey action coming up right here on your home for hockey, Suburban Cable TV. Plays Cano, brings over to the near side, and here comes the Suburban All-Stars again. A slap shot, oh, just off the side of the post, off the stick of Timmy Rink. Yeah, Rink had a good look that time, and he tried to go short side with it. Sort of confused Furlong, who was beat, but he got helped out by the iron. Play is kept in there by Suburban as they make it around the near side. Play comes back in. Oh, right through the slot area. Oh, Wiener with a split. And raising his stick in the air that time looked like it was Schaefer. He <laughs> thought he might have had a goal. Yeah, he can't understand how that puck didn't go in the net. What happened was it went right through the legs of Wiener and right through the crease. Fortunately enough for Wiener, it doesn't go in the net, and Suburban won, comes away that time. Very lucky to not give up a goal. And lower Bucks trying to work it out of the zone. Puck stolen away by Kirk Kaufman. Upended on the play. Now we have a whistle with 3.32 left to go. And another power play opportunity for him. That's going to be a trip in the offensive zone. As a nice job by Kaufman to take the puck at the point. Nice move to walk in. If he's not tripped, he's going to go in on a breakaway instead of trip. The case the shot opportunity, but it's going to have a power play now to Suburban 1. And Suburban All-Stars showing some fine discipline on their special teams play as well. Yeah, they're one for two on the power play, but the second one was only for 45 seconds, so that really only a partial power play. And going off for a two-minute trip is going to be Dan Britt, so Britt to the penalty box for two minutes. Josh Balser on the faceoff. Nate Smith there trying to attack the puck in the corner, handled there nicely by Wheatley. Chris Wheatley has it in the corner. Tries to go back to the point to Danoff. Danoff now dumps it along the near side boards. Wheatley has it, slides one right through the crease to the far side. And on that play is Kirk Kaufman. Good hustle by Kaufman to keep that puck in. Good possession here by the Suburban All-Stars. Trying to keep it in at the point. Balser down into the corner again. Balser tries to go over for help as Lower Bucks tries to clear it out of the zone. Under three minutes left to go in the game. Suburban in front, 5-1. And there's some real road work over there. A puck comes over to the near side, and it's trying to get to Danoff. Danoff on the near side boards, holds on to it. He goes back. Danoff now has it on the left wing, dumps it in right on in, and Furlong holds on to it wisely before it gets out of control. A nice job by Suburban 1 to keep the pressure on Kaufman and Ball. Nice job along the boards to keep the puck tied up and in the zone until they can reset the offense and re-keep it going. They were set up that whole time for the first 54 seconds of this power play in the offensive zone. Now there's a hold of, hold of the puck to force a faceoff. Now a line change. Now you see the first power play unit coming out here with Young, McGinty, and Skinner. A minute, six seconds left to go on the power play for Suburban. They get a shot turned away on the far side. Now Suburban now playing the possession. So finally, as they do, back to Skinner in the corner. Skinner holds on to it, circles around, looks for help, brings it over now to Yordi. Rack over to the far side, right side, fires a shot right on in, and Furlong once again stretches himself out to freeze the rebound. Good quick shot, though, there by Young, as he had two guys on him, still got a quick low wrister that Furlong goes down, makes a save, and covers up. But again, this power play's been going on for a minute and 12 seconds, Florian. The puck has not come outside the blue line once in that minute and 12 seconds. But somehow, lower box All-Stars have managed to keep the puck from getting into the net. Play is turning around, a quick turn, a furlong rebound, score, and it looks like it might have been Matt Skinner with a follow-up. It was Skinner off the rebound. Initial shot by McGinty, turnaround shot out of the circle, and Furlong can't control the rebound. Two whacks at it, Skinner finally knocks it past him for the power play goal. 
that power play took a minute and 18 seconds. We mentioned the puck didn't leave the zone once, and it's the second power play goal of the evening for Suburban 1 as they increase their lead to 6-1. to one. Well, they say persistence pays off, and that time it did. And you talked about it, Greg, the lower Bucks All-Stars, their inability to clear the zone, and it basically gave way to numerous opportunities, and eventually the Suburban All-Stars capitalized. And not only does it keep the offensive pressure on you, but your defensemen get tired, your checkers get tired, and your goaltender is facing a barrage of shots. Sooner or later, one's going to go past them. Especially with all the line. action in front of him and unable to have a clear sight out of the puck. Here's another shot deflected wide into the corner as the play will come up along the near side. Suburban trying to control it. Under two minutes left to go in the game. And Suburban pretty much controlling in their own zone. Also back there is Timmy Rink. Rink having a strong night. We want to congratulate all the members of both teams tonight for an outstanding job. Everyone truly displayed their fine all-star form. And obviously the Suburban All-Stars will hold on for the victory. They'll have bragging rights until next year when we come back and do the third annual college coaches game from the face-off circle arena in Warminster, Pennsylvania. Big hit by Moody that time here out of the middle ice as he put a big check on Narrow to knock him off the skates. Moody has been very impressive tonight for Lower Bucks. Exactly. Only goal. He's thrown the body around a little bit, showed some good, good stick handling ability. He's been the total package. I mean, Mooney, Mooney was somebody who uh, caught my eye early in the first period. Uh, obviously made an impression that he was going to be a dominant player on the ice, and indeed he was. Not only defensively was he very capable, but very good skater. Uh, showed us his offensive ability by netting uh, their only goal tonight. And uh, a good all-around leader on the ice tonight for the lower box all-star so right. bill mooney we congratulate him right mooney's a senior from conwell egan not a real big kid though for you and only five seven a buck 85 we have a penalty coming up here for high sticking and i'm not sure who it's going to go against looks like it's going to be against the suburban one team so we'll see with just 122 left to go and we want to thank the officials both scott adams and john craig doing a fine job tonight and I should say a fairly contested matchup of, of two good teams of all-star talent. Yeah, not a lot of chipping, just some good hitting, great skating and stick handling, and we got some goals tonight. Not as many as we thought we'd see, but you know, some good offensive performances anyhow. And we remind you to stay tuned. Division I college hockey action coming up with the Penn State Nittany Lions taking on the Wildcats of Villanova right here, coming to you from the Faceoff Circle Arena in Warminster, Pennsylvania. And right here on Suburban Cable TV, as play continues, we're in the final minute. Play is kept in by Danoff at the point. He dumps it over to the right wing. And lower box clears it out. And it'll be a face-off on the far side with just 47 seconds left to go. And the last penalty was on Vince DiNardo, called for a high stick. So they'll finish out the game on the power play. Will the uh -huh. Suburban won All-Stars. Two for three on the evening. And the only time they didn't score on the power play was when they only had the 45-second power play after the minors flip-flopped halfway through the first penalty so 125 left to go on that penalty and for the suburban a tremendous advantage as they are very dangerous on the power play situation now we've got a good follow-up in there by scott fife chasing down a defender good for checking as scott's getting some great work here in the final seconds of the game and now it's the Suburban All-Stars advancing it slowly up to the left wing. A quick first-time shot by Nate Smith. Steers it around to the far side. And in the corner goes Chris Wheatley. Wheatley now upended. Ah, Suburban with great possession again. Now it's broken up. 14 seconds, 13. As now Suburban might, might one more surge towards the net. And a puck comes in. Side. And Urban holds on. Furlong holds on for a stop in the action with just five seconds left to go. Yeah, and that time was the freshman on the doorstep, Nate Smith, with a chance to knock one home in the final 10 seconds, but a nice job by Furlong to knock it down, then covers up with the pads to force the face off. Five seconds left to play. This one not already not in doubt for a while. Six to one in favor of Suburban one. So for coaches John Iowa and Andy Richards and Ross Morgan, congratulations on their five to one, six to one victory. And we wish them with their individual teams continued success as we approach the final stages of this 1996-97 hockey season. And we'll be looking forward to bringing up some additional coverage right here on your home for hockey on Suburban Cable. Yeah, stay tuned for some high school hockey here because it's going to get interesting, Florian, as we get in to the later in the season and into the playoffs. We mentioned in our pregame, 
the, the great season so far from both Germantown Academy and Council Rock in suburban one league play. Council Rock comes in with only one loss. Germantown Academy undefeated on the season. Those two teams, if you remember last year, played for the Suburban One title game you and I did here at the face-off circle. With Council Rock sort of pulling the upset last year and winning the championship. And the way things are going this year, it looks like they may meet again for the championship. So some great sportsmanship shown on the ice for three periods of action as both teams now shake hands and congratulate each other. Uh, definitely a truly impressive matchup between two fine teams of all-stars and we wish all the players, the seniors especially, that are graduating, we wish them continued success as they make their way towards their collegiate careers. And for the underclassmen and for the teams that will be heading to postseason action, we'd like to wish them well. And we look forward to covering right here on your home for hockey, Suburban Cable TV. And I guess, Greg, we can kind of wrap up some of the scoring tonight. Yeah, okay, let's take a look at it. Uh, Suburban won the 6-1 to victory. It was uh, Nate McGinty for Suburban getting on the board first. Nice pass from Sean Young. He's still on the post, knocked it home for a quick 1-0 lead about eight minutes into the first period. Uh, Andrew Juski on the power play and Kaufman scoring second period goals. And then in the third period, it really opened up. Three goals for Suburban, one one for Lower Bucks. It was uh, Narog on the flexion in front with the first goal for Suburban, one minute and a half into the period. Mooney came back with the four minute mark to score for Lower Bucks, their only goal. Then Beecham and Skinner round out the scoring for Suburban 1. And I believe they're giving out MVP awards here for the game, and it's uh, Mooney, who we talked about. Bill Mooney gets the MVP award, or most valuable player award from the lower buck side. And it's Dave Woodbury, the goaltender from North Penn for the Suburban 1, and I agree with that call. I said it before, I thought he was the MVP. He played very strong early on, kept lower bucks off the board as his team opened up a three to nothing lead and he did a nice job in the first period and a half that he played well congratulations to those fine young men and their teammates indeed it was a very entertaining game for us to watch and cover as well and so let's go back to the scoring after Mooney made it four to one with his goal four minutes in it was Beecham on a, a, a strange angle goal he threw it in front the goaltender looked for a pass in front instead hit off his blocker goes into the net so the goal there by Robert Beecham made it 5-1 to one, about seven minutes into the third period. And then Skinner, 13 minutes into the period, scores on a rebound in front on a power play. Two power play goals on the evening for Suburban 1. Andrew Juski and Skinner knocking home power play goals in this evening's game. So, and there you pretty much have it. And uh, I'll tell you, Greg, I really enjoyed it. It was a really entertaining uh, matchup. And uh, I should say maybe it's a preview of what we can expect to cover here in the postseason action that we annually cover here on Suburban Cable. Yeah, it was a good, solid game. Uh, sort of your typical All-Star game. There's a lot of open ice and a lot of great plays by great players. The goaltenders came up bigger than usual in All-Star games, but still seven goals scored, some good defense, some good hitting and some great goaltending as we saw by Sam Wiener and Dave Woodbury. Woodbury getting the MVP award for the Suburban One League team. You can't, can't fault Brian Urban or Sean Furlong for the job they did tonight either. So once again, congratulations to both teams and their participants for making tonight's annual high school all-star matchup between the Suburban All-Stars and the Lower Bucks All-Stars. Very exciting and entertaining. The victory goes to the Suburban All-Stars by a score of six to one. Once again, stay tuned for Division I college hockey action coming up. It's the Nittany Lions of Penn State taking on the Wildcats of Villanova. For Greg Betts, this is Florian Kemp saying, stay tuned for more action coming up right after these words on your home for hockey, Suburban Cable TV.